and sing them. How great they are. have a seat either way okay we're gonna sing our call to worship and we'll pray together Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of coming here to worship you on this Palm Sunday. Help us, Lord, to remember the wonderful things that our Lord Jesus did when he came down to earth. All the miracles, all the teachings, all the healings, all the wonderful instructions, and telling people how to enter the kingdom of God. Help us, Lord, to remember to read your word every day this week so that we would uh, understand more and more how great a love you have for us, how you are our creator and you have made us with a purpose and you've given us the instruction manual on how you want us to live and the best way how we can show love, your love to the people around us. Help us, Lord, to love you more and more and more with all our heart, with our, all our soul, with all our mind, with all our emotions, that we would love you and show us how to love our neighbor as we love you and show us how even to love our enemies as you loved your enemies. Thank you, Lord, for your unconditional love that you love us irregardless of how we treat you and how we treat others and how we live our lives that you love us with a, a gracious love, an amazing love, an amazing grace that you have for us. May we worship you in our spirit, in our soul, 
in our mind, in our heart, in what we say, in what we think. May we worship and honor you. May you get all the praise in our lives. May we see that you are a holy God, you are a loving God, and you are a just God. And we can't find the, all the words to describe who you are and how magnanimous you are. Help us, Lord, to just love you and praise you and learn more of your mighty ways. We thank you for Jesus teaching us how to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. Some people can go and read the Bible and, and study and memorize verses and things like that, but they might miss the essence of who Christ is. The next song that we're going to sing is called Celebrate Jesus, okay? And the idea is that at this Palm Sunday time, on this Easter time, on this Good Friday time, that we would focus in on what God has done for us and who Jesus is and what he has done for us. We have a foundations class every Sunday. Uh, we're not meeting next week because of Easter. We have a special schedule next week. But every Sunday at 10 o'clock, we, we're studying the Word of God, studying about who God is and how much He loves us and how He communicates to us. And you are, you are all welcome to come to our foundations class. And after you finish the foundations class, we have a go, look, you know, highlights of the Bible. We go through the whole Bible in one year. And there's so much to learn. Okay, and we have our regular classes. And let's learn more of God each week as we come. Well, the essence is to celebrate Jesus. There's a song called Celebrate Jesus, and we're going to learn it today, okay? song if you get to hear it on YouTube with the full orchestra and oh we do have a full orchestra oh, forget it all right we'll sing it together again all right oh give them a hand okay let's give them a hand all right it's Palm Sunday okay this is the beginning of Passion Week Holy Week all right we're gonna try it again okay from the top hey one celebrate Jesus celebrate the words
please stand for a confession. Let us confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of master. Amen. Please be seated. Once a month in our services, we take the time to observe the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion. This is the time for uh, Christians, those of us who are Christians, uh, to reflect upon our salvation, to um, recognize and remember, acknowledge that we identify in Jesus, uh, with Jesus in his death and burial and resurrection for the forgiveness of our sins and the, the hope, the promise, the gift of eternal life. Before we observe the Lord's Supper, I'd like for us to take a few moments just to quietly come before the Lord for uh, examination to make sure that we are harboring no grudges against one another, that if there's any unconfessed sin in our lives, that we bring that before the Lord and make sure that uh, we are right with Him as we partake of the elements. So let's just do that right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for being loving, for being gracious, for being merciful. We thank you, God, that you are a God who stands ready to forgive our sins. You have shown us in Jesus on the cross dying for our sins that there is nothing that you would withhold from us to make us right from, with you. You stand ready to forgive. As we enter into this ceremony, this ordinance, Lord, of the Lord's Supper, we come recognizing that we have nothing in ourselves in which to stand before you as righteous, nothing within ourselves to get your attention, if you will, Lord, to merit your attention. But it's because you have initiated in this, you have sent your son, Jesus, even while we were still sinners, to die on the cross for us so that we can be right, so that we can have the forgiveness of sin, so that we can enter into right relationship with you. You have given Jesus to rise again from the grave so that we might have victory over death as well and the hope of eternal life. Oh God, we thank you for, for being loving. We thank you for this gift. We thank you, Lord, for forgiveness. And we know that as people who have experienced your forgiveness, we need to extend forgiveness to one another. As we live in this community, Lord, uh, interacting with one another all the time, Lord, there are definitely things that cause um, irritations, things that, that we have with one another from time to time that make it difficult for us, Lord. And it's because we won't yield to you. It's because we need to yield to you. We need to come and show that grace, that forgiveness to one another in the same way that you've shown forgiveness to us. So I pray that as we are here this morning, Lord, that we wouldn't harbor any grudge against one another, that we wouldn't hold on to any wrongdoing or any wrong that's been done to us, Lord, but that we would exercise that grace that you've given to us to be able to forgive, Lord. 
And I pray in doing so, Lord, as we partake in the elements, we would do so with a clear conscience, that we would do so, Lord, with a right spirit, that we would do so, Lord, in what you say is a manner that is worthy. Hear our prayer, Lord. Forgive us and help us to forgive one another. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The night before our Lord was betrayed, he had a meal with his disciples. And during that meal, he took the bread and he said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Following the meal, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant of my blood which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We're told that as often as we do this, we declare the Lord's death until he returns again. This is a time for those who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and have been baptized into the church. Ushers, can you come forward for the distribution of the elements? The Lord took the bread and he said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Please wait for the ushers to distribute the bread and we will stand and remember the Lord together.
Please stand. Let's remember our Lord together. Dear Heavenly Father, the one who gives hope, we thank you that you have given us hope. Hope for eternal life. Hope to know, Lord, that when this world passes by, when our lives are no longer more anymore here on this earth, that we have the promise, the hope of being with you forever and eternity. And it's because of your love. It's because of your demonstration of love on the cross in Jesus Christ that we know we can be forgiven of our sins. And as believers, we know we are forgiven of our sins. It's because of the resurrection we know that we have victory over death. Because of that, Lord, we live in the hope that you have given to us. Help us to remain people of the hope. Help us to impart that hope to others, Lord, so that they might see your goodness and know the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. In his name we pray, amen. Please be seated. Following the meal, the Lord took the cup and he said, this is my blood just poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Once again, please wait for the ushers to distribute the cup and we will stand and remember the Lord together.
Please stand. Let's remember our Lord together. Heavenly Father, as we partake of this cup there and are reminded of the blood that was shed for us, Lord, Jesus Christ dying for our sins, rising again from the grave to give us forgiveness, Lord, to give us hope, to give us eternal life. We thank you, God, for the blood of Christ because we know in the blood is the life, Lord. And this life that we have in Christ is new life. Some of the features that we have because of our carnal nature, Lord, because of our sinfulness, are still evident as we continue to walk with you. But we know we have new life. We pray, Lord, that you'd help us to live our lives in this newness of this, of this new life. A newness that means that we approach each other, Lord, with love and forgiveness that we approach each day, Lord, knowing that you have something for us, knowing that you are speaking to us, knowing that you are working in all the circumstances, all the situations that we face, Lord, to bring about your purposes, your purposes in our lives, Lord, your purposes in this world. You are making us and conforming us more and more into the image of Christ. As we know this, Lord, because you tell us in your word, I pray that we would believe it and live it looking for you to work in our lives to bring us and make us more and more like Jesus. Looking forward, Lord, to one day being with you forever, in eternity, the hope, the promise of eternal life. Help us to live in this hope, Lord. Help us to live in the newness of it each day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please be seated. Back to you. Thanks. To get the full effect of this Passion Week that Jesus had, we have to understand that we are all sinners, fallen from grace, okay? And part of this week, we need to confess our sins, we need to repent of our selfish ways, and see the wonderful selfless sacrifice that Jesus gave for us, and that we might be cleansed um, from our sins. We're going to sing Worthy is the Lamb on page 264. That he is the only one worthy of cleansing us from all the sins and, 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 and selfishness that we have. Okay? This is a thankful song, thanking God for his, sending his son, his love for us, and his sacrifice. Thank you. 
Good. Thank you. Good singing. Um, we're going to ask the ushers to come forward to receive your gifts and offering and tithes that you wish to worship God with. Okay, ushers, take this time to draw closer to him. He's the God that's worthy of every bit of our praise, not just on Sundays, every day. Father God, thank you for watching over us and loving us unconditionally. Please accept these gifts as a token of our love for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And our anthem this morning. Oh, I was waiting for the choir to stand up. Sorry. Uh, our orchestra going to, you know, in the orchestra, when the orchestra plays, there's no words to it. Okay? We don't put the words up there and some of the songs you might... The title of this anthem this morning is called Indescribable because there is no words. There aren't enough words to describe what God has done for us and our feelings towards Him. So this song is called Indescribable, His love for us and our love for Him.
Today is Palm Sunday. So I'm sure if you become a Christian for many years, you're going to know the story of Palm Sunday, right? Hmm? Then I don't have to preach. <laughs> Palm Sunday, the week before Jesus was crucified, buried and resurrected. So next week when we get together, we celebrate his resurrection. But the week before, like today, nobody really know what was going on. Let's turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 21, verse one to 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied there and her coat by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone say anything to you, tell them that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Said to the daughter of Zion, see your kings come to you, gentle riding on a donkey on a coat. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the coat, placed their garment on them, and Jesus sat on them. And very large crowd spread their garment on the road, while other cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowd that went ahead of him and those who have followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? The crowd answers, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth in Galilee. It's a very big occasion. And Jesus tried to kind of calm it down make it very low key already. Why Jesus went into Jerusalem? All he does, you know, all his ministry, it was in the street most of the time. He doesn't get into the temple and do the preaching inside the temple or anything like that. Most of the time it was with the people. And a lot of people follow him around and get to know him a little bit more and more. And especially some of those, when they saw Jesus performing miracles, raising the dead, healing the sick, it's just amazing to them. So when Jesus went into Jerusalem here, first of all, Jesus did it not some kind of a plan ahead and say, well, you know, I'm going to go into Jerusalem and make, big, make a big thing out of it. It isn't at all. Jesus did it because he has to fulfill the prophecy. You know, the prophecy, verse 5 there, you see that quotation actually is from Zechariah chapter 9 there. It's way back, the prophet already prophesies that one day, you know, the Savior will go in and it will be on a donkey. So Jesus sort of fulfilling the prophecy that so many years ago it was prophesied. And he knew it's part of his Path he has to go through. So, 
So before he even get close to it, he went to that little village, you know, Bethphagy, and he told the disciples, go in there and you're gonna see two donkeys. One is the mother, the other one is a little boy, you know, a little one. Pick them up, and if anyone asks you, just say, hey, the master needed it. That's it. How does he know? Did he plan ahead? No. It's all because of the prophecy he has to fulfill. Jesus, if you really look into it, you know, a lot of time when we saw the movie or the slideshow, we saw Jesus on that donkey going into Jerusalem, you know, we, we only see it as, well, part of the history, part of the Bible story. But how many of us really think, what was going on? Why Jesus have to do something like that? For what reason? Now, one of the most important part is to fulfill the prophecy that all the way through history, people are looking for it. They're looking towards it. When is that Savior is going to come? When is our Messiah going to come? Right? So Jesus have to kind of fulfill that. Very interesting. Maybe in our life, to understand that, you can also apply it in your own life. God has a certain plan for us. Jesus' life, Jesus, he knew. He knew what he has to go through. You remember when he prayed? The last, you know, the, he prayed to God and he, he asked God what? He said, you know, can, it, can this cup be taken away from me? You remember? Huh? See, Jesus didn't particularly plan his whole life out. He has to fulfill the mission that God has given him. His mission on earth. Sometimes in our life, we run into the same thing, certain thing that we don't like it happen, you know. And especially being Christian, sometimes when we, when we experience something that we don't understand why, or very sad, you know, then we come to God and say, God, why? Why you let that happen to me? Yeah. Well, Jesus didn't say that. He humbly fulfilled the prophecy. You know, just going pick up that two donkeys and he ride on the young one. You know, nobody ever ride on it. Wasn't he afraid when he get on it with, the, with, the, with that little, you know, young donkey jumping around and bouncing and all that? It might. But he picked that one. It doesn't, it doesn't really fit him, you know, when you look at it. And Jesus sitting on a, a, a small little thing like that, you know, going into the city. Why is he doing that? Well, the people were expecting a king, their king. Do away with the Romans, you know? That's what they were expecting. Jesus purposely makes sure that he doesn't fulfill the expectation of the people. If he ride on a horse getting into Jerusalem, what happened? Huh? I'm sure the Roman soldier is going to surround him. It's going to be what? A war. See, sometimes God allows our life to go through certain things we don't understand. But as long as you know it's to fulfill God's 
plan in your life, then you will accept it humbly. No big deal. Not easy. But I want you to understand, on Palm Sunday, don't just say, oh yeah, Jesus went into Jerusalem. There are a lot of things Jesus have to go through in order to fulfill God's promise and God's view, God's plan. First of all, he has to fulfill the prophecy. He has to find a donkey. And even riding on a donkey instead of a horse, it still stirred up a lot of things. See what happened. The disciples went and find the donkey. So they put their garment on top and let Jesus choose which one he want to ride on. Jesus choose the small one. And they start going into Jerusalem, enter the city. Wow, what happened? All the people that follow him and the people inside the city, the word spread around. Oh, Jesus coming in. And then people inside, outside, wow, make a big thing out of it. I don't think Jesus planned it that way, okay? In the Bible, you only read it like that. Oh, the crowd. And then they were screaming. Hosanna, Hosanna, you know? And not only that, they take off their garments and put it on the floor and, and let Jesus walk on it, you know? The donkey walk on it. Why is that? Do you understand why? It, you, you think it's just, you know, when you saw the slide or, or the movie, maybe it, it, they, they just exaggerated, huh? No. They take out the garment and put it on the floor, showing their submission to the authority of that person. That's what it is. That means they accept the authority. That's why they take off their clothes, take off the garment, put it on the floor, and let the person walk on it. Submission. That means you are our king. You know, you are our authority. That's what it was. To take down the garment and put it on the floor. I don't think Jesus expects all these things happening. You know, all these people, where are they coming from? You know? Do they really know he's the Messiah? And then people cut the palm tree, put the, put the palm tree on, on the floor. What's palm tree means? What's the meaning behind it? Victory. We won. See? That's what Palm Sunday is all about. Because they cut the palm tree's leaves, put it on the floor too, waving at Jesus. What are they showing? We won. We won. See? That's what it was. Don't just look at it as a movie or a, a slideshow, you know, oh yeah, that's what happened when Jesus went in there. Why Jesus make it such a big deal? He didn't, he didn't ride with the group and go to the, to the uh, uh, government center, right? He didn't. And you can imagine, if you can kind of expand your imagination a little bit, you find out that's exactly like what is going on this past few weeks in Oakland. The demonstration, isn't it? Huh? Even though Jesus didn't go in with all the soldiers behind him, but isn't it like a demonstration? All those people, hey, we win, we win, you know, our, our savior, our, you know, our king. Hey. That's dangerous. Jesus already made it very low key. He didn't ride on a horse. A horse is for the war. 
He ride on a donkey. He came in very low key. But the people make it such a big deal, screaming, making noise. It's like, it's like a demonstration. I want you to understand. Palm Sunday is not as simple as what we thought. Okay, Jesus have to go through a lot to calm down those people. Well, if you go down the passage, you find out Jesus went into the temple and he got really upset because the temple was a mess. So he started cleaning up the temple. He didn't go to the government building, you know, or to face the soldiers. He didn't. He went to the temple. They calmed down the government. This coming week, every day, I wish, you know, we have a service every day so you can go through what Jesus have to go through during this coming week. We have the station of the cross here. You see that? Hmm? In a Catholic church, people will go in there and stand in front and meditate and pray. Because that shows what Jesus have to go through of the station, each, each place where he has to stop, suffer, what he has to go through the last week of his life. Jesus followed the will of God, go through the whole thing, step by step. And you can find one part where he was being judged. The same group of people who was cheering him when he went into Jerusalem also were the one that were screaming out, crucify him, crucify him. Hey, it's only five days later. What was going on? Five days before, they said what? Hosanna, Hosanna. Right now, what are they saying? Crucify him, crucify him, five days. What happened? Have you ever... Take your imagination, go a little bit further. Some of them, totally it's for political reason. Seeing Jesus coming in, oh, he is our king, you know. All their thought is on the political side. But when, he, when they saw Jesus not doing much, and even got arrested, what do they do? They gave up. And then they express it by what? Oh, get rid of him. Crucify him. Crucify him. Huh. It's so sad. Well, that also gives us a lesson. And I want to put it right here on Palm Sunday to challenge all of us. Are we that same type like that crowd? We follow the crowd to go to church. We follow our friends to accept Christ. Huh? To get into the activities, whatever the church has provided us. And then one day when our light doesn't get what we want, what do we do? Get rid of him. Crucify him. Huh. I've seen enough. There are people who are very active at one point, and then after a while, they left the church. They don't believe in God anymore. They even challenge Christians. It's so sad, you know? Then why, why they go to church in the beginning? 
because they follow the crowd, because they have some other idea in their heads. When they got what they want, then they praise the Lord. Do you praise the Lord? When you don't get what you want, you're still praising the Lord and say, God, I know you are on our side. There are times we don't get what we want, but keep on praying to him. Especially when you serve God, you'll find out we go through the same thing Jesus went through. A lot of time, God wants us to ride on a donkey, not on a horse. God doesn't give us big title, big names, a lot of authority, no. God makes us very humble. Sometimes even people look down on you. Like when they say, crucify him, crucify him. What? Why? Huh? Because they look down on him. You can't help us anymore. You're useless. Go to die. See? It's okay. As long as you walk with him. People always criticize you. Being a minister, I got criticized all the time. Uh, people left our church and wrote me a whole four or five pages and say why they leave and my sermon is lousy. You know, I'm not a good pastor. It's okay. I find out not too many old people that are older than me respect me. I'm young. I have people came up to me and said, Reverend, now I cannot respect you. You look too young. I remember when our church started for two years, a group of people come and meet with me and said, Jensen, you only can work with the youth. You can't work with adults. They left. That was only a year after we started our church. What's wrong? I look too young. God gave me that look. Now I look too old now. I got all my wrinkles. What do you do? Huh? Jensen, you're too old. You should retire. Get out of here. Huh? I don't know, no matter what you go through, there are always people look down on you. That's okay. As long as you know you're fulfilling the vision God has given you. That's it. You finish the job, you go back. You don't worry about it. You know? Doesn't matter. You just do your part. Jesus did his part. I mean, people would say, yeah, what is he doing? Riding on the donkey. Come on. Right? Huh? He's our king. They changed their attitude totally five, years, five days later. That's all right. But Jesus fulfilled the most important thing on earth. He gave us eternal life. He resurrected. Overcome death. Isn't that great? Hmm? Don't be surprised. A lot of time when we serve God, we have to go through just like what Jesus did. You look at the disciples. If you read the Bible, you find out many of them, when they came out to, to serve God and preach the gospel, they have to go through, they, put, they got put in jail, they got beat up, several of them were crucified, you know, executed. None of them were famous. Everybody know him. No. They all go through suffering when they serve the Lord. It's always like that. But be faithful all the way to the end. That's what Jesus did. Be faithful and fulfill God's promise and God's vision. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, starting from today, helping, help us to remember what Jesus had to go through to fulfill the, the great mission for human race. 
that he died on the cross for all of us. He resurrected to overcome death. Now, we are so glad that we know we have eternal life in you. But what you have to go through, we can never imagine, never understand. Lord, we just pray as we learn from you, as we go through life with you, you help us. There are times when we need you to carry us on you. There are times we need you to hold on to us tightly. Lord, help us to go through life following your step, to be humble, to be faithful all the way through. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, to prepare you for this week, uh, we're going to sing one, ooh, we're going to sing uh, He is Lord, and that will help you to get the perspective of what Christ had to go through for us. Father, we thank you that you loved us so much you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to live on earth, a perfect sacrifice, that we might have eternal life, that we might have all our sins forgiven. Help us, Lord, to come, come before you, confess our sins, and repent of our ways. Agree with you that you have the keys to eternal life, that we can only come to you through your son, Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Help us, Lord, to examine ourselves, and more importantly, uh, examine who you are and, and what you've done for us. We pray, Lord, this week that we might take um, good time, that we might have a devotional time with you, a quiet time with you, that we would uh, talk to you, let your word speak to us, pray to you, and ask you what you would want us to do with the lives that we have left. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your word and your sacrifice for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, today we have our Silver AK. This Wednesday we have our leadership training for the adults. And um, that's it. camps are coming up. Oh, hi, Randy. Sorry. Hi, Randy. This is the time of our service where we welcome our guests. If you are a guest or you brought a guest, take this opportunity to introduce yourself or your guest. Hi, everybody. I'm Yang Silly, and I would like to introduce my brother and sister, sister from, you know, sister Yang Jia Li, and my brother, Hyung Jil Lee. Uh, visiting me from Korea. 
they're going to be here for a few weeks. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank God you. bless. Okay. Please be seated. Thank you. No one else? Okay. Uh, let's have the first slide. Um, we don't want to distract you from this week, okay? So we just want to remind you that this Friday, we're going to have a special service. Starts at 7.30. Uh, those of you who are helping out, uh, orchestra ushers and other workers, we're going to start at 6 o'clock. Okay? I mean, orchestra rehearsal at 5 o'clock. Uh, everyone else, we're having a run-through. We're having uh, five different stations uh, throughout the church. Um, different things like worship, prayer, um, confession, things like that, okay? So we're going to have that right in the middle of the worship. We'll start to worship here at 7.30, and we'll do some things, and then we're going to break out, okay? We have two levels. Um, it's the same. Uh, we have one on this floor, for those of you who can't handle the steps and all that, and we have uh, one going downstairs. So we have e each, each floor will have five stations. Uh, Pastor Scott will explain to you in more detail on that day. Right, right, okay. And then we're going to come back after we've done those five stations and come back and we'll do some singing. We'll have a, a message for you. We'll have communion. Uh, we'll have a wonderful evening. Hopefully we'll have a, a spirit-filled two hours, okay, to about ninth. And afterwards we'll have some refreshments for people who want to talk about Jesus and what, what, what is Good Friday, what is, uh, uh, what is Resurrection Day and all those things, okay. So do invite your friends. Okay, you don't have to be a Christian to come. We'll, you know, uh, we, we're open to people who just want to find out more about what Easter and Good Friday and Christianity is all about. Okay, so do invite your friends, and it won't, you're not going to sit here for two hours. Again, we're going to do a lot of things. All right, any questions? Ask Pastor Scott afterwards, okay? He'll be glad to explain it. <laughs> okay. Um, and then next Sunday... Please do not come at 11.15. It'll be over. All right, next slide, please. Uh, next uh, next um, Sunday, we'll, wow, faint. We'll have our sunrise worship here in the sanctuary at 7 o'clock, okay? And, <laughs> and then at 10 o'clock, we'll have our combined uh, English and Chinese worship in the cafetorium, all right? And we'll have a just gigantic choir in there, okay? Uh, English and Cantonese and Mandarin choir all together with the orchestra and everything like that. Okay? So um, that's the two things. Just make sure you get here at 10 next Sunday. Okay, 7 and 10. I think that's about it. Have a great Palm Sunday. Hope you have a great um, Good Friday. And we'll see you next Resurrection Day. All right? Shall we stand and sing our doxology to the Lord? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Have a great week. Good Friday. Happy Easter.